Roe vs. Wade has been overturned, and we give glory and praise to God for that. But how do we end up in a society where people think it makes sense to kill their unborn children? I would argue that pornography is one of the, if not the main, contributing factor to that belief. Well, why? Well, I've quoted Karol Wojtyła on the show before. Karol Wojtyła was a Polish philosopher who went on to become Pope John Paul II. He wrote a work called Love and Responsibility, which I highly encourage everybody to buy. In it, he contrasted love with use, right? To love is to will the good of the other for their sake. Use is the opposite of that because I want my good at your expense. Pornography teaches us that we can have our quote unquote love, right? That we can have our sexual pleasure and that we can have it apart from responsibility. So I don't feel any responsibility to this woman or to this man that I'm engaging with sexually. And I certainly don't feel any responsibility to the life that results from it. I wanna share a few quotations from Pope John Paul II because this man was a prophet in this respect. He says, love between man and woman cannot be built without sacrifice and self-denial. And yet the whole point of porn is that you can have the fruits of love as it were. And of course they are distorted and ultimately unfulfilling, but at least that's the promise of it, right? Sexual delight, but I can have it without sacrifice and I can have it without self-denial. If I've been quote unquote educated by pornography from a young age, then it again, I think follows that I need not take responsibility for this woman or for the life that results from it. He says, love consists of a commitment which limits one's freedom. It is a giving of the self. And to give oneself means just that, to limit one's freedom on behalf of another. When we talk about freedom in the United States today, we often think of freedom as uh, freedom from constraint, right? I should be able to do whatever I want. But the proper understanding of freedom is not merely freedom from constraint, but it's freedom for something. For example, this is a, uh, Fulton Sheen used this example. No one would go up to an Uber driver or a taxi driver and say, are you free? And he says, yes, I'm free. And you say, hooray for freedom. Well, that makes no sense. What you're asking is, are you free to give me a lift? Man's freedom exists for the sake of love. Elsewhere, he says, friendship, as has been said, consists in a full commitment of the will to another person with a view to that person's good. So when I tell you that I love my wife, Cameron Frad, what that means is I want her good and I do what I can to bring that about. I'm concerned about her, right? I sacrifice my immediate, say, desire for pleasure for the good of her. I sacrifice a good night's sleep on behalf of the children that result. Now, none of us do this perfectly because we're sinners, right? And we have to repent of our selfishness and grow in virtue by God's grace. But pornography, again, teaches the opposite of this. He also says, take away from love the fullness of self-surrender, the completeness of personal commitment, and what remains will be a total denial or negation of it. Elsewhere, he says, limitation of one's freedom might seem to be something negative and unpleasant, but love makes it a positive, joyful and creative thing. And here he goes, this is exactly right. Freedom exists for the sake of love. Freedom exists for the sake of love. It doesn't exist for the sake of deviancy. It doesn't exist for the sake of objectifying other people. It exists for the sake of love. Treating a person, says Carol Wojtyła, as a means to an end, and an end, moreover, which in this case is pleasure, the maximization of pleasure, will always stand in the way of love. If I view pornography, what I'm doing is subordinating the good of the pornography performer and her dignity. I'm subordinating that to the much lesser good of my pleasure. He says, a person is an entity of a sort which the only proper and adequate way to relate is love. And again, what is love? To will the good of the other. So if I relate to you in a way other than that, right, other than willing your good, then I'm acting contrary to how I ought to. And since it's only in living a life of love that we can hope to find any serious degree of fulfillment, 
it follows that the person immersed in pornography and unwilling to do what it takes to be free of pornography is assuring his own misery, anxiety, depression. Love, he says, is never something ready-made, something merely given to man and woman. It is always at the same time a task which they are set. Love should be seen as something which in a sense never is, but is always becoming. And what it becomes depends upon the contribution of both persons and the depth of their commitment. So if I was to be accurate in my declaration of love to my wife, I would say, I'm learning to love you, right? This is a process. Much more could be read. You know, um, Hugh Hefner said of Kinsey, if he is the prophet, I am his pamphleteer. Well, you and I, who wish to combat the sexual revolution, the lies of pornography, and the, the, the evil of pornography and abortion, I think should agree to say that if Wojtyla is the prophet, and I really think he is, that we need to make his teaching known. We need to unscramble what has been scrambled by pornography. So Roe versus Wade has been overturned, but the battle continues. And it doesn't just continue in us trying to make abortion illegal at a federal level. I mean, we should be actively seeking to make that happen, but we should also seek to rid ourselves of those things that cripple and retard our love and make us incapable of sacrificing ourselves for the other. This is a manly call or whatever the equivalent is if you're a woman. This is the wonder womanly, I don't know what it is, call. You and I need to get serious about eradicating sin in our life and then loving God and loving those around us. And if we do that, then this society will become more beautiful and it will begin to realize that human persons are not discardable objects. Rather, they are things that require our love, 